I mean, we have to remember that by the time we get to 2016, we'll be about as far away from Ronald Reagan's election as president in 1980 as Ronald Reagan's election in 1980 was from D-Day. And so we do have to adapt our message from time to time that core underlying principles will remain the same. But the policies that we choose to pursue will necessarily change as our economy changes and as, as the burdens imposed by our government change. Well, you know, we can't keep looking back to the same solutions we relied on 30 years ago. We've got to adapt our message to changing times and changing circumstances. We've got new challenges today that need new solutions. And so that's why we've always got to be retooling conservatism based on the same principles that we've always followed, but adapting those principles to meet our changing needs. In, in 1976, the conservative movement found a leader for the ages in Ronald Reagan uh, and, and ran that conservative leader for the ages against an incumbent, more establishment Republican president. Now that primary election challenge failed. Uh, but we had nonetheless found the right leader. A after that effort failed, uh, we as a party united ultimately behind a conservative reform agenda of sorts, and that propelled our leader for the ages forward to victory, uh, electing Ronald Reagan president of the United States in 1980. I think our most significant challenges today relate to our oppor opportunity crisis. We've got uh, several layers of this ec economic opportunity crisis. Uh, we have immobility among the poor, insecurity in the middle class, and cronious privilege at the top of the economic ladder. At each stage, we can look to things that the government is doing wrong, uh, things that are contributing to that economic opportunity crisis in America. And I think that's where we've got to focus our attention today. And we've got to use conservative principles to lift barriers to economic opportunity in America. What are the crucial differences between the conservative and liberal approaches to helping the middle class in, in this day and age? Well, the liberal approach typically says let's expand government, especially at the federal level. And the conservative approach says let's lift obstacles that are being placed by government in the pathway of hardworking Americans who are just trying to uh, uh, approach opportunities to better themselves economically and otherwise. And this was the uh, idea that really was at the heart of what Abraham Lincoln thought about the purpose of government, that it's the purpose of government to lift these barriers, starting with those barriers that are imposed by government itself. As conservatives, we believe in freedom. And we adhere to freedom not just because freedom in the abstract is a good idea, which it is, but because of the things that free individuals and free families do when they are free. They form communities, and those communities have two hallmark characteristics. They have within them free markets and voluntary institutions of civil society. When those twin pillars of a strong civilization are in place, the human condition flourishes. It prospers. Individuals and families find that they have economic opportunities and opportunities for learning and for growth. That's what we're after. That's what we're about. And so the, the, the idea of this resembling a Norman Rockwell painting or a Frank Capra film uh, reflects the fact that this is all about building healthy families, healthy communities, free market economies, and voluntary institutions of civil society.